Hey everyone, Megan Olivia and Brett Okamoto. We are backstage UFC. Orlando has just wrapped up and that was a really entertaining main event between Stephen Thompson and Kevin Holland. It was waved off, so technically Stephen won by TKO. Kevin was injured, his corner decided, you know what, it's not worth it to send him in there for the fifth round. But prior to that, what did you think? Because it was so entertaining, so fun to watch. I, I mean, Kevin Holland has really taken over that Donald Cer Cerrone kind of role. Um, we'll probably be saying that until, you know, we retire from this sport, Megan. Like, we'll, we'll be using that Donald Cerrone um, sort of description over and over again because he's really just set the template of a guy who just went in there and fought, you know, almost to his detriment sometimes, some of the fights that he would take. Yep. If you're talking about a title pitcher, but it didn't matter because he was Donald Cerrone. I think that that's now Kevin Holland, right? Is that the um, just the frequency in which he fights and the type of fights that he has is going to mean more than the actual results. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, a purist. Like, I would like to see Kevin Holland focus more on winning, you know, more so than being just the fun guy. But he is the fun guy. He's, he's, he's really moved his career towards that point. I mean, I thought that there were opportunities for him to wrestle Stephen Thompson yeah. a little bit. And he was just like, no, nah, we're. we're not going to do that because that, that's not what the fans came to see. And the UFC is going to love him for that. The fans are going to love him for it. Um, it is. I, th I think Kevin Holland is going to be one of those guys who ends up taking these fights and we're like, what is Kevin Holland doing, man? He's like stacking the deck against him, but people are going to love him for it. So he's going to have a fun career because of that. I really like that comparison. I think that makes so much sense. On the flip side of this one, Stephen Thompson comes into this almost 40 years old. As John Anik says, he's 40, he's a man. He's about to be in yeah. February. I believe it's his birthday. And he's got some interesting wins in the division. He's got some interesting potential matchups. But where really do you see him in 2023? I think he needs one more big win, you know, and I think that that's that's what this victory set up. You know, um, it was a fun fight. It was a fight that we're going to be talking about. It is it keeps his spot in line. He was already number six and he's got wins against other guys and then we're in the top 10. So he still has that sort of resume. He's not right there in terms of getting you know a title shot right away. But we say this about Stephen Thompson all the time. And yes, he is going to be 40, but probably by the next time we're talking about him because his birthday is in February. But he hasn't lost any speed, and because of his style, it's so unique, he could be a potential bad matchup for anyone in the division. So I think he's one fight away. Um, you know, they put him in a big spot. They put him on the right card, and, and, uh, and all of a sudden, he's going to be right there for one final shot at title. And, I mean, we just talked about this with Glover Teixeira like, in 2021. The guy yeah. won a, a title for the first time at 42. Right. It's possible. It Absolutely. happens. And Stephen Thompson is that unique guy that can create problems for people. A lifelong martial artist who continues to try to work on areas not only where are his strengths, like striking, but also where he has weaknesses. So it'll be interesting to see what the new year holds for both of these guys and what division Kevin returns in. Yep. But I want to talk about the co-main event because Rafael Dos Anjos really set a record here. He's got the most octagon time ever within the organization's history. Over eight hours competing in there. <laughs> Somebody wrote a tweet like, imagine doing an entire workday fighting for your life. And yeah. that's essentially what he has done. Yeah. Still remains one of the kindest guys in the game and really used all his weapons to become victorious against Brian Barberina. Yeah. Um... And, and I think it, he, he was kind of funny. I was like, um, you know, what, what a storyline that is like, because like, he brought it up, after, you know, after the fight. The seven years ago in this building is yeah. when I beat Cowboy Cerrone, defended my title, and then I was supposed to fight Conor McGregor. I was like, oh, man, yeah, like, like what great. And he was like, yeah, I didn't even realize that until recently. You know, that was not the plan, but it all just kind of fell into the lab. It's, it's a really nice narrative. This was a really important fight for Dos Santos. I, who knows if he's going to end up getting Conor McGregor? We have no idea what Conor McGregor is doing. We haven't had an idea about that for a long time. But I, I just I just hope that the UFC can give RDA something that gives him some type of direction, you know, because he is in a tough spot, Megan. I mean, we, we've seen yeah. we've seen this story. We've seen him go up to welterweight. He, he made it to the best of the best. And that size difference was big. You know, he fought Kamara Usman. He fought Leon Edwards. He fought Colby Covington. Those were tough fights for RDA. And I think they're going to still be tough fights for him. You know, I asked him, are you going to put on some size bulk up this time for welterweight? He's like, I'm 38. How much size am I really going to yeah. put on? Like, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to put on a lot of muscle. So... I don't. I can't get invested in this in his run at welterweight. Okay. But you know, then at lightweight, he was kind of just fighting the guys who were ranked below him. That's not a fun spot for a fighter to be. So I just hope that the UFC can find some kind of direction for him, and maybe he will hit the hit the jackpot, and maybe he will get that Conor McGregor fight. Is there a division for him where you think more fun fights exist? Is it welterweight or lightweight? I mean, because. They're, they're so talent heavy in both of them, but do you believe like, oh, you know what? There might be better matchups in this one versus this. I mean, maybe welterweight, you know, and, and, and then you don't have to see him cut all of that weight. Right. He really does like to compete at welterweight because, I mean, he's cutting weight to he's compete at welterweight. He's a big guy, yeah. He cut a lot, lot of weight to be a lightweight. So I would say probably welterweight, but it's tough. It's tough, you know, because as, as, as much as, as RDA is beloved, let's be honest, he's not like 
he's really not one of those guys that I think a lot of the other kind of big names look and say, oh, I want to fight RDA. He's not like looked at as that money fight but because he's like a sweetheart, like you say. You and, know? He has, he's, and he's so many skills. Yeah, yeah. He's not really a, a, a guy that people call out for kind of these super fun, quirky fights. So he's he's got a little bit of a matchmaking problem on his hands. But I think he made the right move and coming back up to Walter Waite, opening some doors for himself, looked great in this fight, called out, shot his shot against Conor McGregor. And now we'll see where the chips fall. But I do. I'm, I'm hoping for good things for RDA. Me too. Me because too. he's so talented and he is such a great guy. He does deserve matchups for him that make sense for him and that there's actually kind of a reward at the end for him. Amen to that. Totally agree with you there. Before we wrap this up, I want to talk about Sturve Sergey Pavlovich because... I mean, we knew there was power, right? We, we, we knew that this fight was going to end by knockout, but it was so quick and so easy for yeah. him to take Ty out of there. Ty also returned to competition relatively early after that loss to Cyril gone in yep. Paris in early September. Um, just your thoughts overall, because that was, I believe, four versus five in the division. Yeah, and I had I had some reservations about Ty coming back so quickly. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. When you watched this fight, were you like, oh, no, Ty just looks really bad for coming back real fast? No, you were like, oh, my God, Sergey is a yes, scary, yes. scary dude. You know, so, so I think that Ty, you know, was it too fast? Maybe, but I, I give more credit to Sergey and um, Megan. Eventually, I think we're gonna have to see this guy fight a little bit past the first round, and we're gonna see what happens when somebody <laughs> yeah. is able to put some kind of, um, you know, adversity to him. Uh, you always don't know the answer to that. You don't know what that's gonna look like until it happens. But man, this guy is throwing hard. He's throwing fast. He's throwing smart shots. I mean, this looked almost like a brawl, but then when you watch the replay of it, you're like, no, he's being surgical in there. Like he. The amount of damage that he caused on Taito Ivasa in a matter of 53 seconds, that was very, very scary. So I, we got to see if he can wrestle. We got to see if he can fight in the second round. We got to see a whole lot of things with him. But, man, it's... There's a lot of, of uh, there's a lot to, to think of. I mean, we said the same about Francis Ngannou when he ran the all, he right? ran that all the way up to the to the title. So this right? guy looks like he's capable of the same thing. All of Sergey's uh, knockouts have been in the first round in his career. I believe he has something like 14 of them, and he made the change for this camp. He went to American Top Team for this one. I heard from his coach his coaches down there that he has never complained. That all he does is continue to work. And when I asked him backstage, sort of about himself, I'm like, tell me who you are like when you're not competing. He's like, oh, I can't separate those two things it's that's yeah. all I think about that's all I want to do so a very bright future for him this was a fun one but let me just say east coast time zone fights it, ra <laughs> it ain't it yeah. it's, it ain't not, it. it's, it's, it's not as morning. good as west coast yeah though. yeah so we're gonna need to start a little earlier next time we come over here but again we are in Orlando thank you so much for watching we will see you for UFC 282 next week Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.